Hi everyone. I am Anupriya Tiwari and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we are going to talk about one of the most important concept in digital design that is clock domain crossing or we can say CDC. If you are an RTL or verification engineer this topic is extremely crucial because CDC related bugs are among the hardest to debug in silicon. So in this video we will build the foundation we will understand what exactly cdc means why it is needed and what happened when two clock domain interact what is metastability and a real life example of metastability in action by the end of this video you will have a strong conceptual base to move into synchronizer and design techniques in upcoming parts so i am trying to make a cdc series and will explain you in detail about cdc so let's get start with a basic so what is clock domain crossing let's understand in a digital design we often use more than one clock right so i am taking example that cpu might run at 500 megahertz while a peripheral or uart might run at 50 megahertz right so these are different clock domains meaning they are not synchronized to each other now imagine a signal generated in one domain needs to be used in another domain for instance a status signal generated by a 50 megahertz peripheral needs to be read by the 500 megahertz cpu then what happen how it will be done so the moment that signal travel from one clock domain to another it is a clock domain crossing or simply a cdc path the challenge here is since both clocks are independent right so there is no fixed phase or timing relationship between them the destination flip flop might capture the data right at the moment the signal is changing and that's where the danger begin now you might ask why do we even need multiple clocks why uh, one clock is not enough for the circuit so why not keep one sig uh, single clock for the entire chip so this is the main question well in real soc design they it's a rarely practical different blocks are designed for different purpose right there are many blocks uh, in soc so everyone has different function some need to be faster some need to save power and some operates on external frequencies like usb ethernet or uart for example the processor core may run at 1 gigahertz the memory controller at 400 megahertz the peripheral bus at 100 megahertz and the uart at 25 megahertz each has its own domain because of timing performance and power trade off but this also means that data often needs to move between these domain right and when the ha when that happens without proper synchronizer the design can behave unpredictability right signals can get missed captured wrongly or even make flip flop go into unstable states that's why we need special cdc handling mechanism to make sure signals are transferred safely regardless of clock frequency or phase difference to visualize this better imagine is system where the cpu is running at 500 megahertz 
the memory controller is at 250 megahertz and a UART peripheral runs at 25 megahertz. Now, if the UART sends a signal, say A data ready flag that needs to be read by the CPU, that signal is crossing from 25 megahertz domain to into 500 megahertz domain, right? So in one clock cycle of the UART, the CPU clock might toggle 20 times. So the CPU could catch that signals at any random phase, possibly in the middle of its transition. That is where why timing uncertainty comes in and this uncertainty can lead to one of the most famous problem in digital design called metastability. Now let us understand metastability in depth because this is the at the heart of CDC issues. Every flip flop in digital design has a setup and hold time. These are small windows around the clock edge and when the input uh, must remain stable. If the input changes too, clock, too close to the clock edge, the flip-flop doesn't know whether to capture 0 or 1. It enters a metastable state, meaning the output is neither a clean 0 nor a clean one for some time. This metastable state might last for nanoseconds or even uh, say longer. And uh, if this unstable output drives other logic, the entire downstream logic can behave unpredictably. So in simulation, you might never see it because simulator are digital so they don't show analog voltage transition. But in real hardware, this can lead to rare, random and very hard to debug failures. That's why in industry, we take metastability very seriously. We can't eliminate it completely, but we can reduce its probability to an extremely small value using synchronizer circuits, which will cover in the next video. Let's take a simple real world example. Imagine a mechanical push button connected to a digital input pin that is clocked at say 50 megahertz. Now when you press that button, the signal doesn't change instantly. Okay, so it bounce and transition over a few microseconds. If that change happens exactly around the flip-flop clock edge, the flip-flop might violate setup a whole time. As a result, the output might oscillate or take some random time to settle to a valid logic level. That's a metastability. So in a small system, it might just because one wrong pulse or glitch. But in large digital system, especially in a SOC, a single metastable even can crash a subsystem or cause silent data corruption. That's why every CDC path must be treated carefully in digital design and verification. So let us summarize what we learned today. CDC means signal transfer between different clock domain. It's needed because SOC use multiple clocks for performance, power and external interfaces right so next when a signal crosses domain without synchronization metastability can occur and what is metastability it is when a flip-flop violates setup a whole time 
and enter in a unstable stage that is metastability states we can't avoid it completely but we can make it highly unlikely with proper cdc techniques so in the next video we will go one step deeper we will discuss the type of cdc the problem that arise in each and start building our first synchronizer circuit with very long example so if you found this video helpful please like and subscribe and share the video and stay tuned for part 2 type of cdc and common problems thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video thank you